Welcome to Stratford-upon-Avon. If you hurry, you can still catch the tour of Shakespeare's house. Thanks. William Shakespeare, the furniture and decor are all original and have remained untouched since the day he died. Indeed, this exact room is where the great playwright would have gathered his family round the hearth to spin for them wondrous tales woven from his imagination, hold his youngsters riveted, and bringing a proud smile to his aging father's wrinkled face. Shakespeare, no oh, doubt... What's that under this stool? I beg your pardon? Don't touch! There's something stuck there. It looks like a hardened wad of gum. I thought you said this stool dates from the 17th century. That is correct. This stool is exactly as it was when Shakespeare sat on it, teaching his children how to read and write. He... Stop! Moving! It that is a wad of gum. Wasn't gum, like, invented recently? Obviously not, since it is stuck under the stool. What? And the stool has been unmodified and precisely preserved since 1616. Except for your friend here moving it just now. Are you sure about that? It looks like gum to me. Dr. Witherward? What seems to be the problem here? These visitors are authorship deniers, sir. I see. This one questioned the authenticity of the stool. Oh, no, I, I didn't. I just asked about the gum underneath And then the... he proceeded to indoctrinate the other two who were with him. Huh? This is how it all starts, isn't it? Indeed. I suppose you also believe Elvis is still alive. What? Or that the earth is flat. No, he just pointed out to us that... Why would you listen to anything he says? What are your credentials, sir? Uh, my credentials? I uh... have a master's in Elizabethan literature from Oxford and a doctorate in early Jacobean punctuation analysis from Cambridge. And you... Oh, look, I, I'm just visiting from Nebraska. Dr. Uh, Witherwood asked you a question. Your credentials, please, sir. <clears throat> um, I'm certified as a journeyman electrician through Lincoln Community <laughs> College. <laughs> did you even finish secondary school? Oh, of course I did, yeah. What makes the likes of you? Think you can match wits with Professor Walter Witherwood. Look, I, I might know squat about Shakespeare, but I can tell you that's a wad of gum. Yep, it sure is. Used to stick mine in the same place in my stool in shop class. Hmm. When did you take shop? The year he dated, oh. what's her name, remember? I don't like this. I don't like this at all. What shall we do, Professor? Fear not. I shall get to the bottom of it. Welcome, Welcome to Washington, Washington D.C.'s Reagan International, International Airport. Airport. Please Taxi. refrain from parking in the yellow zone. Taxi! Fold your Shakespeare library, if you please, and step upon it. Thank you. Ah, Professor Witherward, you knavish old loon. No time for pleasantries, Professor Grimstaunch. As I told you on the phone, this claim that chewing gum was invented after 1616 is trending quite staggeringly on the internet work. What? That's preposterous. Precisely what I said. Bloody face space and internet. Spreading lies on the web. Web of lies. Yes, rather humorous. But more seriously, if this substance is on the stool, it was obviously invented by 1616. Without a doubt. Low-life conspiracy theorists twisting reality to fit their gum-chewing fantasies. Probably unwittingly in the thrall of the Wrigley Bazooka Industrial Complex. Indeed. Normally, I would not deign to respond to such drivel, but it bothers me that the uneducated masses are being led astray. Those miserable online fools. Worthless groundlings to a man. Let me see. The foremost research facility on chewing gum is... Joanne's Gum Gallery, Quartzsite, Arizona. I rather believe I sent some upcoming field work. Thank you, Professor. I shall return to England and hold the barbarians at the gate. And I shall to Quartzite, Arizona, post-haste. 
Welcome to Phoenix, Arizona, Sky Harbor International Airport. Taxi. Please refrain from leaving unattended armadillos in the yellow zone. Taxi. Joanne's Gum Gallery in Quartzite, if you please. Quartzite? Well, that's like 150 miles away, pal. Spare no expense, my good man. Okie dokie. Miss Joanne Watkins, I believe. We spoke on the phone. Oh, yeah. Didn't think you'd actually show up here. Just in time to help. Here, hold the ladder. Ah, well... Done. Bronze medal, America's weirdest, 2021. Yep, finally bumped the land's largest lump of lint out of third place. Suck on that, Rapid City! Yes, quite. I am here because... Five bucks. I beg your pardon? Admission, five bucks. Fine, here. As this is the world's premier research facility in the history of masticatory resin, I hoped to gain access to your pre-colonial era archives. Look, the oldest piece of gum I have is from 1898, but maybe you can find something in the stack over there. Ah, these, uh, glossy periodicals are catalogs of the contents of your reference library, then? Nope. They are the reference library. I see. I assume you don't have a reading room. Just take them next door to the Quartzite Cafe and grab a cup of joe. Look, I gotta get back to the gift shop. Hey, don't touch the Edwardian gumball machine, you little shit. Quartzite Cafe. Right. Let's have a good look at these magazines, then. Good lord. Collect, spelled with three exclamation points. And subtitled The Hoarding Monthly, February 1964. Kitsch, USA, July 1973. Where can I get you? A pot of jar jeeling steeped for four minutes with cream. All I got is a cup of iced tea from a mix. In a styrofoam cup. Of course you do. Well then, I, I presume you have coffee, do you? Mm hmm. Then bring me a double espresso, half. All I got is Folgers in, in a, a styrofoam, styrofoam cup. cup. Fine. Right. Baseball cards, bazooka gum, something called a jawbreaker. Hmm? Hang on. William Wrigley's business, established in 1891, was only the most recent in a series of confectioner shops, continuing a family tradition, stretching back to... Yes! Check, please. Welcome to Baston's Logan International Airport. Taxi! Keep moving your frickin' asses out of the yellow zone. Taxi! Where are you going, Polly? Harvard University, please. Harvard Yard, Cambridge, you got it. How about them socks, huh? It was lovely to hear from you, Gerald. How unexpected. Yes, well, I am on a matter of some urgency, so if we could proceed with what you have been able to discover. Oh, well, I was able to find out more about the Wrigley family history, tracing them back as far as Lancashire in the 1560s. Really? They immigrated to Pennsylvania in the mid-1700s, Thank you the so much, Professor Chen. In... Oh, you're welcome. I thought we could have lunch. Sorry, must run. Welcome to London Heathrow. Taxi. EU passport holders, please proceed to the longest and slowest queue. Taxi. Where to, Gov? Stratford-upon-Avon, my good man. Bradford, that's ninety bloody miles. Yes, yes, yes. Just go. Okay. Welcome back to England, Professor. Enough of the pleasantries. Well, well. I got your telephone call from America. I've been scouring the records, and I believe I have something. Smashing with a word. Let's hear it. A branch of the Wrigley family moved out of Lancashire to East Snivelling in the early 1500s. Where's East Snivelling? Near Stratford? Uh, well, no, but it is near-ish to Coventry. Which is, like Stratford, a town in England. And you know what sort of community East Snivelling was? A hamlet! Good! 
God, we're on to something. And in the 1500s... That's the same century as Shakespeare. There were several wriggly women named Anne. That's the same first name as Shakespeare's wife. And if you rearrange the letters of Wrigley, remove some of them and add in some different ones, you can spell Hathaway. That's the same last name as Shakespeare's wife. Are you saying that it's entirely plausible she wandered into Stratford one fateful day and swept Shakespeare off his feet? I don't deny it. And are you saying it's entirely plausible that she convinced her husband to use the type of community she was born in, Hamlet, as the titled character of his greatest work? I can't disprove it. And are you saying that Anne Wrigley, a.k.a. Hathaway, as it was no doubt misspelled in the town records, brought her secret family formula for chewing gum to Stratford with her? It's a finite possibility. And thus, it is easy to go from there to Susanna Shakespeare. No doubt a saucy little vixen of a daughter, sticking her mother's concoction under the stool while listening to her father's Greek lessons. Well reasoned, old chap. Brilliant research, Professor Witherwood. And so, my colleague, Professor Grinstaunch, and I produced... After many hours of sitting and furrowing our brows... This momentous work entitled Examining Shakespeare's Stool. Indeed. And may I add for our listeners, after personally reviewing it, I will emphasize how weighty and substantial it is. And far from dry. Indeed. We've been speaking with the professors Grimstonch and Witherword on the publication of their latest work on the history of the Bard, Examining Shakespeare's Stool. Available nationwide, starting today, with our own gift shop in Stratford. Would you off and start sweeping, Harry? All right there, Doris. Just nice to hear our name on the BBC. Our name indeed. Not a peep about Doris and Harry. Just those two tough profs. Pass me that mob, love. Now, now, we're all part of the Stratford family. You're fooling yourself, Harry. Now, don't forget to leave a stack of their bloody books by the register. Uh, yes, yes, yes. What's that? What's what? You're not starting that disgusting habit again, are you? Oh, now, look, Doris, it keeps down my cravings. Would you rather me go back to smoking me pipe? You always said the smell reminded you of your filthy old Uncle Albert. Well, be a far side better than hearing you chewing and snapping away like... All right, all right, all right. Here, you can't stick that under there. Oh, I always stick it under something. Tried shaking it off into the dustbin, but it don't work. You're so disgusting, you know that? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, then. Time to clean the loo. Right, I'll bring your bucket. 